still trying to fiddle out this whole fiddle out figure figure out. I've been talking about too many quite particular uh, people. <laughs> And I'm talking about them fiddling, unfortunately. I hope you can hear and see me. Um, oh, yeah, I think so. I've just checked on the thing. Uh, I've just been talking about the Hugh Edwards uh, BBC presenter scandal once again on this channel. And I've come straight here to see you guys and talk about Tom Cruise. Because... I don't know what even to say about this. I had a video last week go completely viral uh, with Claire Headley from Scientology, from one of the top Scientologists she was, and she was able to give us some real inside detail as to what Tom Cruise is really like behind closed doors, how close he is with David Miscarriage, and some of the awful things he does, and what he enables just by having his face as the face, basically a deity in Scientology. And that came out, uh, that video, about the same time as Mission Impossible, a million or whatever it is, Dead Reckoning. Um, and I guess I needed to talk about that. And there are a couple of reasons why those who've been following very closely on this channel, and there's quite a few of you because we've just hit 200,000 subscribers. So thank you very much, guys. Do appreciate that. Love having you here. And let's hope we grow together for a long, long time yet. Now, that film, now the first thing to say about it is it was just, it, it came out and was just like huge. Everyone's watching it. And not just that, something fishy is going on. Because these films are like, okay, but they're not the kinds of things that are like the critics' darlings, are they? And yet, it has 96% on Rotten Tomatoes, which is like the go-to um, review website. I use it for a lot of stuff. Now, it has 94% for its audience score. That doesn't surprise me. I know these are big crowd pleasers, the Tom Cruise films. That is the whole point of the Scientology propaganda that he does Mission Impossible for. But the reviewers were at 96%. Now, I recently went and saw, what was it, Top Gun 2, and I thought it was one of the worst things I've ever seen in my life. I know some people like it, and that's okay. We don't have to like the same films. But that also had 96% uh, reviews. That's suspicious to me. And I don't want to get all conspiratorial. Maybe it's a coincidence, but both... Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1 and Top Gun Maverick have exactly 96% on the tomato meter. That is the consensus of critics. I thought Top Gun, from a critical aspect, maybe it was fun. From a critical aspect, I thought it was atrocious. Just the most awful film. I did go and see it because I got to do my homework about this man. This time around Mission Impossible, I thought I just can't put myself through it. Some of you guys would. Let me know down below or in the chat uh, what you guys think. Um... I'm quite intrigued. <laughs> uh, maybe, you know, and, and you can like it if you want. I don't, I don't think that's a problem. Um, as long as you like this video as well. Hit the like button. Oh, gosh. Um, so, yeah. Um, <laughs> I know a lot of people who did go to see these films. And, and these films are important. I'm going to get onto why that is in a minute. They're very important to Scientology. Um, but several friends of mine have gone and said it's incredibly convoluted. And these are not friends of mine who are like big critic guys. These are just like people who like these kinds of films. Apparently, it's really, really convoluted. Uh, there's loads of exposition, which is when the characters just spend hours explaining the plot to you. You know, instead of show, don't tell, it's very much tell, don't show. Except there is show because Tom Cruise does all these mad stunts. So he's doing all the crazy stunts. He's in his 60s. And this is also relevant to his whole Scientology persona. And I'll get to that in a minute as well. But the point is, he's doing these mad stunts to get to certain places, according to my friends who have seen the film. Uh, and other people can just like walk, walk up and they're just there like, hey, I just walked here. Whereas he's like flipped over a motorcycle off a cliff and done mad things to get there totally unnecessarily it's basically a vehicle for tom cruise to show that he is immortal that he never ages that he's able to do things that other humans can't do you get where i'm going with this this is very much a scientology vehicle i don't want to make people feel bad who've gone to see it i'm not a big believer in boycotts necessarily if you want to go and like you know escape the mundanity of life if you want to just go out and watch a movie you know Go and do it. What do I care? Um, enjoy yourselves. Get some popcorn. And maybe the film was good for a lot of you. I don't know. Uh, people in the in the chat saying they just want to see Simon Pegg. He's wonderful. He's absolutely wonderful. Bit of a cop out the way he, um, you know, won't address the whole Scientology thing. But then, if I was Simon Simon Pegg, perhaps I wouldn't do. You know, you just you want an easy life, and I totally, totally get it. What is weird? 
Well, there are a few things that are weird. So it's weird, firstly, that everybody's giving 96%. Is that like what Scientology has in their pocket? You know, it does make a difference to the films and to his standing, Tom Cruise's standing in, in Hollywood. It's one thing having these big box office hits that don't actually uh, get rave reviews. Uh, it's a totally different thing when you're, you know, both a big box office person, a uh, huge star, and you're also highly reviewed. I mean, that's so rare that it is almost unique in the industry and people keep calling him the last true action movie star it's absolutely not true of course and i keep saying that and then people message me afterwards saying can you stop saying he's the last man and i said i don't say it i'm saying people keep calling him that it's articles all over the internet saying he is that the last true action star or whatever he is it puts him on a league of his in a league of his own that's the thing here um so something I've addressed before, of course, is his very close relationship with his co-producer and co I think writer in this and co-director, co-everything, Christopher Macquarie, who I came to find through, you know, emails I received actually, um, shares well, according to the register, shares an apartment in Clearwater, Florida with Tom Cruise's daughter. And it makes no sense because Christopher Macquarie, who also wrote The Usual Suspects, as far as um, anyone knows, is not a Scientologist. But we saw, we've all seen how over the last few years, syst systematically, it has gone on Mission Impossible. You look at Wikipedia, look at the producers on board. There were like 10 of them, 12 of them. Uh, it's a huge, huge enterprise, this whole thing. And gradually over the years, not even that gradually, the film's budgets have been going through the roof. And at the same time, the producer's list has gone down and down and down until it is just Tom Cruise and Christopher McQuarrie. It is just the two of them, these two buddies who basically legally share an apartment in Clearwater, Florida, which is a Scientology building, are making this film where Tom, Cru where Tom Cruise, the main character, is in an otherworldly sense able to defy laws that apply to humans. You see why I'm going with this. It is just the clearest Scientology uh, vehicle. And Cruz has always opted for these kinds of things. Uh, the War of the Worlds, Minority Report. It is all about paranoia from the outside and grouping together and trying to save the world. Um, and, and, and we know that Tom Cruise, his face is vital in attracting more people to Scientology where they are abused, their families are ripped apart, and they lose all their money. Tom Cruise himself is believed, according to Insider, or they say he's been reported as having given um, at least $25 million to Scientology over the years. The impression I got from other ex-Scientologists is it could be well more. Uh, and that was in 2008 when we heard about $25 million. So... It's presumably a lot more. Now, Aaron Smith-Levin, former Scientologist, go check out his film, his film, his uh, channel, Growing Up in Scientology, really interesting, of course, and uh, go subscribe to that. Well, Aaron uh, was saying that they have a list in Scientology of the top donators. Is that the word? Donees. Donors, right? <laughs> the top donors. Uh, Scientology, and it has crews of like two or three million. And we mused as to why that might be. And I, I came down on the, with the conclusion that um, I think it has to be something reachable so that other Scientologists give money too, because then they can say, hey, look, I'm on a par or I'm above Tom Cruise in the donation money. But that's why it only says a couple of million. If it was the truth, which is dozens, you know, potentially hundreds, who knows? Uh, then nobody could aspire to that and people wouldn't give more. But the fact is, regardless of the true amount, Cruz is keeping Scientology afloat himself. He is just holding it up in, on his own. And without Cruz, there would not be so much uh, of the abuses and the financial corruption and the Danny Masters and stuff that we've talked about a lot on this channel. The actor from that 70s show who was accused and, oh well, and has gone down for the horrible things he did to women. There are just so, so many awful things. And he stands for that and he holds the whole thing up. Now, interestingly, it has been reported that Mission Impossible 7, despite starting fast out of the blocks, despite having these 96% uh, really good reviews and all these weird things, despite clearly being a vehicle for Scientology, started really, really well and has stalled, just completely stalled. And I'm reading this, it isn't TMZ, but they know about the numbers and things. I know it's a bit of a gossip rag and, and all of that. Um, 
but they write, Tom Cruise, Tom Cruise is flying high in the new Mission Impossible, but the flick itself is already coming in for a mediocre landing at the box office. At least that's the outlook. The early ticket sales are in, and with the pace it's currently at right now, Dead Reckoning Part 1 is projected to rake in about $78 million domestically through its five-day run. The movie got released early uh, last week at, with full screening starting Tuesday, so it's been almost a week as I report this now. The problem with that figure, the money... Assuming it holds true that uh, through Saturday and Sunday, I haven't I haven't got the latest then, so this was on Friday, is that the early estimates had Mission Impossible 7 coming in at way higher at about $90 million in North America. While the early global box office numbers have helped boost Dead Reckoning to a total projected opening of about $122 million so far, the movie is still well below its reported budget of almost $300 million, and that's just for part one. At this rate, it needs to have the kind of legs Top Gun Maverick had just to make its money back, let alone turn a profit. And Barbie and Oppenheimer are both out next week, which are bound to uh, further give a hit to Mission Impossible, or like further stunt it, I should say. So does this mean people are fed up with action, fed up with Tom Cruise, or are some of you boycotting? Are some of you finally saying enough is enough? Hollywood has turned into... Well, it's just a cesspit, to be honest, but it's turned into something where they're trying to actually rectify that in so many ways, particularly with uh, different kinds of abuses of power. Tom Cruise somehow, somehow has survived it all and continues and continues and then puts out bigger and bigger budget movies. What happens, though, when he can't command the same money back? He can't guarantee that a film's going to make money. It only has to happen once for question marks to start being raised. Maybe people no longer buy the idea that a man in his 60s can do all this mad stuff on a motorbike. Um, and, and that's what I think right now is his true protection. So I'm really interested to see what happens if it doesn't get its money back, if, which is a very real possibility right now. Uh, as I say, right now, all the articles are like, oh, is he the last action movie hero, blah, blah, blah. Once he doesn't have that protection of money, which is so big in Hollywood, maybe that's when people start to truly take notice. So I don't know, because the stunts apparently in that film are like next level. Like I say, it's just a total Scientology vehicle. It, it it couldn't be more. People talk about that. What was it? Battlefield Earth or whatever. That was the Scientology film. It got the worst reviews in like the history of film. Uh, and now, you know, this is different. This has got great reviews. Everyone's speaking so kindly about uh, Tom Cruise. They're speaking so nicely about him. What a wonderful man and all this stuff. I'm just waiting for something to come out and just hit. And I wonder if maybe that's not even possible because so much stuff has come out. Aaron Smith-Levin, Claire Headley and I and all the other ex-Scientologists, all those people. I'm not an ex-Scientologist myself. I should say I'm just a journalist, journalist and YouTuber. We've put out so many videos. My video with Claire from last week is at nearly 600,000 views in the first four or five days. Uh, that's a lot of people watching. Um, it's it's probably not as many who have seen Mission Impossible 7, though. No, but it's a lot and it's bound to put a dent in their... Um, in their in their ratings, I I would encourage. I mean, look, I would always encourage you to share this stuff, of course, but also share the stuff of Aaron and Claire and all the others. Share it as much as you can. Uh, hit the like button, put it out there, because that's the way that this guy finally gets taken down. And we wake up one day to newspaper reports where they tell the truth about this guy, um, and some of the awful things that he has allowed to happen and that he has made happen. Uh, let me know if you've got a few questions, get some questions in now. I can't pop them up on the screen because I'm using OBS and it doesn't seem to allow you to do that, so I'm not going to use it again. Um, yeah, some people asking about some of the suggestions about Tom Cruise. You should watch that Claire Headley thing. I'll put a thing about it at the end or you can just go to my lives. It's from last week, but she just talks about what it was like, you know, auditing him, the sort of Scientology therapy. Um, that kind of thing, what it was like being around him, uh, and the people there who were made to, um, who were made to like make flowers for him and Nicole and all that stuff. Um, so there you go. Um, but, but, but I'm just looking down to see if there are uh, questions. Also, I've got quite a delay because of the way that OBS works, so I'm not seeing uh, the questions yet. But I will in a minute. I am sure. Just hitting that live chat. Oh, and put like big uh, capitals saying saying question. Uh, let's see. Forever Curious says, 
haven't seen Mission Impossible 1, not likely I'll watch 7. I've never seen any of them anyway either. I've got nothing against people who do. Um, you've got to do your thing. You've got to enjoy your, enjoy your life and watch those movies. They, like I say, they distract you. and People's lives are difficult. All of our lives are difficult. So there you go. Donna Roberts, thank you. She says, Andrew, you are one of the only people that I would put up a like before even watching. Oh, thank you, Donna. Shane says, do you think Tom Cruise knows people think he's crazy? Yes, I do, because he can't be that stupid. He must have a rough idea about it. And Tom Cruise, as we know, in 2005 did go on the offensive around Scientology. He did, he hired his, he fired, sorry, his PR woman and he put his sister in her place and they just went full on Scientology jumping on the sofa of Oprah Winfrey, having the interview with Matt Lauer, Peter Overton, and he was so into it, and it really went extremely, extremely badly for him. And they've stopped doing it. And David Miscavige has stopped doing it, so it's clearly like, the you know, from above as well, uh, that has, um, that order has come from above. Stop talking about it, because it isn't just not going well for you. Elizabeth Rob Roberts says, why does Hollywood sequel all the great films down to watered down versions money 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 and i think you know that already that's what it's about and with tom cruise it's like it's it's more about that than anything else it's all about the money right now and it's about the money that he can put into scientology that is huge for him he's a true believer by the way i i think he really believes in what he's doing he thinks he is saving the world of the reactive mind the reactive minds of science scientology that scientology believes in it's completely and utterly bonkers uh, so there you go right i'm going to leave you to it and i will be back soon with more updates as we follow the tom cruise stuff scientology uh there's a civil suit coming up uh oh crystal asks six hundred thousand views which video i see 61k as their highest video it's my it's my video on my on my channel if you go to live so on the so go into my channel then click live not just videos live scroll down up to about eight or nine videos down uh, there are two videos about Tom Cruise. One was with Aaron Smith Levin, which has a hundred and something thousand, and one was with Claire Headley, which is at like five, six hundred thousand. It's completely ridiculous right now. Go check that out. Keep watching this channel, um, and I will bring you more news about this as it progresses because the whole thing is just bonkers. Oh, please do hit that like.